Hi everyone, this is Maths World UK. I'm James Grime and today I'm talking to Alison Kiddle. Alison Kiddle is a mathematician who's an expert at devising the sort of problems that encourages mathematical conversations and mathematical thinking, which might be for young people, but of course it's a lifelong skill for all of us. So today Alison has brought in some problems inspired by Lego and the sort of patterns that you can make with Lego bricks. Now this isn't the sort of puzzle that has a right or wrong answer. What we want you to do is to play with it, explore it and see what sort of questions that you come up with. And that's what I like about Alison. She's always doing this. If you follow her on Twitter, she's always posting little problems that she's noticed in her everyday life. I've really enjoyed the, have you seen the biscuit posts that I've been doing? No, I haven't seen biscuit posts. Uh, it was more towards the start of lockdown because I was eating a lot of biscuits. And I thought one way to justify eating a lot of biscuits would be to post pictures of them. So there was one where I had uh, like four rectangular biscuits arranged in like a little windmill. And uh, then I had them rearranged so they made like a, a square. And I just always use the question, uh, what do you notice and what do you wonder? To see what mathematical questions people will will come up with and there's quite a big community on twitter that do these notice and wonder uh posts so it's a really good way to get younger children talking about maths and yeah you can just do it with something as sim simple as a plate of biscuits and some people ask questions like i wonder what flavor the biscuits are i wonder if you're going to eat all seven of them and that's absolutely fine because it's this balance of the human side of of the, the sort of questions that you're inspired, but also the mathematical in questions that you're, you're inspired to ask. You've, you've brought in something that you've kind of noticed that we can all, you know, if we've got it at home, we could try out ourselves, can't we? Yeah, so one of the joys of lockdown is um, I've been able to get my Lego bricks out. Um, I've, they, they, were, they were sort of in a, in a bag, uh, a, a dusty bag full of bricks, and I've dusted them all off. And to start off with, I did sort of uh, try and build myself some, some models. I built a, a little Lego village of villagers who were all in lockdown. Um, but then I started thinking, you know, could I do, do some maths with this? And one thing I really enjoy doing with Lego bricks is just making patterns. So I'm just going to flip to the visualizer. So I've got a green base board and I've put some yellow and red square bricks on top of the base board uh, and I've arranged a pattern. And I guess I just want to ask you really that first question that I always ask of what do you notice and what do you wonder? The question that I thought would be an interesting one to see how people answered, first of all, is just at a glance without doing any counting, is there more yellow or more red? I feel like it should be the same if I did no counting at all. If you do some counting, are you surprised? I'm going to start counting now. OK. OK. One, two, three reds. Another four reds. That's seven. That's ten reds. And now I'm going to look at the yellows. One, two, mm -hmm. three, four yellows. Three yellows in the middle, which is seven. And then four yellows. So it's eleven yellows. So those eleven yellows but only 10 reds. So when I looked at this pattern, I noticed that all four corners were yellow. And I wondered whether the corners had anything to do with it, because I noticed that if I do what you suggested and then extend the pattern, so I need another red one there and then a yellow one there and a red one there to convince the checker the continue the checkerboard pattern. So now I've got uh, four yellows and four reds on the top row, four yellows and four reds on the second row, and four yellows and four reds on the bottom row. So I've got equal numbers of red and yellow, but this time I've got two yellows and two reds in the corner. So I think it's got something to do with these corner bricks. And if we can make a pattern where the corners are all the same, you're going to have that imbalance. But if you can get it where the corners are distributed evenly, then you're going to have this balance between the number of yellows and the number of reds. So I then did the thing that I always do when I'm, I'm working on a problem. So this was actually inspired. I don't know if you've ever noticed that on police stations, there's like a police logo and it uses a checkerboard pattern. And um, it was the blue and white squares on that that made me think about, do you need more blue squares or more white squares? 
make the pattern. But I could have described that first pattern I gave you. It had uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven uh, squares all together along the top and three squares down. So I could call that a seven by three checkerboard pattern. And so being a mathematician, I could generalize and I could say, if I have an M by N checkerboard pattern or a P by Q checkerboard pattern might be easier to say, but if I use some algebra to represent it, is there a formula to tell me how many red bricks and how many yellow bricks I would need to make that P by Q pattern? I think that's quite an, an interesting one to explore. Um, I do have a couple of other checkerboard pattern problems that have uh, occurred to me, if you'd be interested. Oh, definitely, yeah, let's have a look. Right, okay, okay, let's have a look at uh, this one then. This might remind you of a problem that you've seen before, actually. Um, so this time we've got a four by four with um, blues and whites there. And sometimes when I'm working with Lego, I find that I want to be able to take the bricks off, but it's sometimes difficult to get them off the board unless you've got a, a sort of a corner uncovered. So one thing I sometimes do is I use another brick just to lever off the bricks that I've got like that. OK, so handy top Lego tip there for you. OK, so what I've got here is I had a four by four pattern. I've now got a three by four pattern. And what I want to know is if I put my uh, double sized bricks that I'm removing two bricks at a time, OK, I can start taking bricks off like this. And what you can see is I've chosen to do it in such a way that I'm not going to be able to get all of the bricks off at the end. So I can take those two off there, but then I've still got two bricks left. And if I put them all back again, so just to show you the starting configuration I had, I had checkerboard pattern but I had the two corners I had the two corners missing there and there and then I was taking the bricks off two at a time by joining that on and so perhaps a little challenge that people might like to go away and think about if they've not seen this problem before is is it possible to find a route through to take all of the bricks off two at a time by putting the brick on like that and taking it away. And if it's not possible, how do you know? So the other extension that I thought it might be interesting for people to consider, all the way along the line so far, we've just used two colours and we've just made a checkerboard pattern. Uh, so I've got a, another baseboard here. This is, uh, I can fit uh, four along that side and eight along that side. So I guess that grid would be uh, 32 bricks on it if it was full. And it might be interesting, we have that original problem about how many bricks would I need to make the different rectangles, but if I did three colours in a row instead, so uh, red, white and yellow, red, white, yellow, and there's all sorts of interesting questions that you can ask about this, because um, I hope you can see starting to form, I've got these diagonal lines happening. So I reckon that as I keep going, I'm gonna end up with a yellow one there, a white one there, a yellow one there, and, and so on. Um, but I could have chosen, instead of going red, white, yellow, I could have changed the pattern to go white, yellow, red, white, yellow, red on the second row. So there are different patterns that I can make and that could start getting us into some of the mathematics about how many different ways that you can arrange things as well. So it just, it just feels as if there are lots and lots of open questions that can be asked about making these checkerboard patterns uh, on Lego baseboards just using uh, two by two bricks. And I think most people probably have some of these knocking around somewhere, maybe in a dusty old box in the attic like, like I did. Um, I would advise people to make sure that after you have been trying these puzzles, if you're doing them on the floor rather than on a table like I am, pick all the bits up because when you step on these, it really hurts. I think we would both be interested in seeing what questions people have as well and what ideas they come up with. So perhaps people Definitely, can yes. put those ideas in the comments, something like that. That would be brilliant. I'd love to see what other questions people come up with. And I mean, I've answered quite a lot of these questions 
for myself to my own satisfaction but it'd be really interesting to see if someone can think of something i've not thought of yet that maybe is a little bit challenging and it might give me something to think about thanks to alison again like we said we're interested in the sort of questions that you might come up with and this is not just about lego we want to encourage these kind of mathematical conversations for everyone young people and all of us so more than ever stay curious and i'll see you next time